Daniel Flickton here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by heavyweight contender Daniel Dubois here at the lovely University of Kent facilities. Nice for me to not have to travel very far for work for once. Daniel, how are you doing? New beginnings? Yeah, yeah, definitely. New start, new beginning, fresh start. Let's go. <laughs> so obviously the last time we saw you in the ring probably doesn't bring back great memories for yourself yeah. um, against Joe Joyce. You must have watched it back. How difficult has that process been to kind of watch it and watch yourself lose for the first time as a professional? Um, you know what, I've lost before as an amateur. I've always come back stronger, so this is not going to be no different. I've got to come back stronger, dig deeper within myself and bring out the best in me. And when you do watch it back, what, what are you thinking? What are you saying to yourself, that version of Daniel Dubois while you're watching the video? No, uh, listen, I just see it as experience and um, I, I need to move on from that now. Um, I learned my lessons and, uh, you know, maybe some of the things I did or whatever, that's in the past now. So I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm a man of today, a man <laughs> of the future. So <laughs> Glad to hear it. Um, you obviously moved on training wise from the Peacock Gym, they're still managers of yeah. yourself, but moved on training wise first to, uh, I was going to say Mark Tibbs, but he wasn't really there for much of your time, yeah. he was in uh, the US with Billy Joe Saunders, so mainly Jimmy Tibbs, Stephen Andrews, what, what was your experience there like? It was good, I enjoyed it, uh, we, we went all, all around the country, me and Jimmy Tibbs, so we went <laughs> sparring with Derek Chisora, mm -hmm. got good rounds with him, and um, yeah, we had some good work up and down. You know, all of travelling around again was good, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Tell us a bit more about the sparring with Derek, because from what we've heard in the past, he takes it very seriously, like a fight almost, and obviously he was preparing for a big fight with Joseph Parker. Yeah, he came expecting me and it was a war. It was, it was good though, because I needed that just to wake myself up and, you know, you know make sure everything's ready, and my eyes ready, I, you know, I'm fine, I'm flat and hard and I'm ready to go now. Were you nervous at all about the eyes specifically when you're starting back sparring again? Because it, it'll be the first time you're taking shots in that area since the injury occurred. Is it something you were nervous about until you actually took a shot? Uh, no, uh, not at all. I, I put, in my mind, when I get in the ring, I don't think about what's happened before. It's all, all I live for now in the moment. And um, I just thought, it's like, if, if it's, you know, my eyes, in my mind, was coming stronger, feel back stronger. So. It's fine, we're ready to go again. And did it feel any different when you took a shot? I mean, I'm not, I know you're not in there to take shots, <laughs> but on the odd occasion when you took one in that area, did it feel any different? Did it feel stronger? Did it feel not as strong? Well, we, we won't know that. <laughs> Hopefully we'll avoid it, taking any more shots, but um, I just, you know, I don't think about it, allow myself to think about it. Um, you know, all guns blazing, my style is, I don't have time to think. In the boxing, you don't have time to think about these things. So, yeah. And I know sparring, sparring, but did it give you any sort of indication about how a fight between yourself and, and Derek might pan out if that ever happened in the future? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely a few things are taken away from that, but really it's about the comeback now, so right, right now I'm just thinking about this next guy and what I've got to do and that I want to take care of him as quickly as possible and when I see an opening then I'll go straight for it and you know, go in for the kill as I usually do. Now the next stage of that comeback is obviously here at the University of Kent under Shane Gwigan, incredibly well respected trainer, has worked with a number of world champions in the past. Before telling us why you picked Shane as your new coach, why did you move on from Jimmy Tibbs and the Origins gym in Essex? Well, you know, really Mark and Jimmy, they couldn't really um, commit to training me and, you know, they let me know that they couldn't commit and they had other things going on and just wasn't, wasn't able to do it. And so they helped me make up my mind and Shane is something, some guy we knew from, you know, my Caroline, she, Caroline, my sister was training with him, oh. you know, before Olympic journeys sort of started and I just, I just thought, yeah, we'll go for it and here we are today. Now obviously you're very happy to be here now, but when you were first told by Mark and Jimmy that they couldn't accommodate you because they've got other things going on, yeah. were you quite disappointed because that was your big new start and then suddenly you have to change again? Again, this is a fresh start again, you're not going backwards. Um, you know, they let, they, once they let me know that, it was, it was straight away from there, where do we go now? It wasn't, you know, boxing is a short window and uh, really it's, you have to change and adapt just like a fight. And so we just made a decision quickly and uh, I was not really disappointed in Mark or any of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them training me if they didn't, couldn't do it. Mm. And, you know, put, put them in a position to do something they can't do. So no, no regrets there. 
And something I should ask you about a little bit delicate, but there was an interview recently with Mark Tibbs where he said something like, I've trained boxers who have got their dads involved in their career before, as if that was a bad thing. Yeah. Was, it, was there any issue there that you're aware of? No, not really. Um, you can't be talking about, you know, uh, my, my relationship to my dad, and, you know, he, he just takes care of us. He, you know, I've always been with him. He started me off in this game, and, you know, I, I we're tight, you know, our connection's tight, and he's backed me every, you know, ever since I started this sport, so, but, you know, if, you know, I don't understand that excuse or whatever it is, you know, he has to say what he has to say, so. And saying that, I saw your dad on the way in, um, in the van, waiting for you outside. Yeah. Personalised number plate, hard to miss. Yeah. I'm guessing that means you're still not driving yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. Well, after this, let's see. Give me a few more months. Yeah, the comeback must include a driving license. <laughs> um, you've obviously come here, Shane McGuigan. What, what made this the right place, or what did Caroline say to you about him that kind of helped convince you that this was the one to take you forward? Well, I saw improvements in her. You know, technique and uh, where, where she was looking in, in this boxing and uh, when she used to come up here and stuff. So, yeah, she told me, and then, uh, you know, my dad just thought, yeah, we had before about it. And then, um, so yeah, Shane's, and you've only got to look at the guy's record, you know, he's had more, in my opinion, he's one of the best trainers in the world. And, you know, if you look at the world champions he's had, you know, countless, and um, that is enough to speak for itself. And from what we saw, we only got a brief glimpse of you doing a bit of pad work earlier, but is it a lot of technical work in these early stages of working with a new trainer, just little tweaks? Yeah, that's it. You know, little, little things make a big difference. And that with Shane, he's just focusing on my little flaws or, or little, you know, areas of my style that he's putting right, and um, he's making me aware of them so I can put them right myself. What would you say is the biggest or the most important thing that you've learned so far? Something that you've changed and then you've been like, wow, that's made a big difference? Just uh, be aware of everything, you know, um, what I'm doing. And, you know, we're going to see, you're going to see anyway, my next few fights and, and all of that. So, you know, I just want to show you guys what I'm doing and you'll see. When you say be aware of everything, do you mean kind of the way your body's moving instead of different body mechanics? Because we saw some of that in there. Yeah, that as well. And, uh, you know, my, my punches and, you know, just, just little things. Like I said, you'll see them in my next fights. How are you adjusting to the strength and conditioning work here? Because they put quite a lot of emphasis on it. They're very knowledgeable about it. <coughs> yeah, yeah, you know, they've got a full set up. Everything's here in this building. So um, I haven't got down to it yet. We've just literally been a, a week and about. This is my second week here. So, um, yeah, well, after this fight, we'll get more, more into the world. That's it. And... You moved around a lot as an amateur, you represented lots of different clubs, you've had a few trainers now as a pro. How confident are you that this will be a long term relationship? I'm very confident, I'm 100% but I you know, want to make this work and Shane is more, more he's young and he's a, a knowledgeable guy and he's, you know, like I said, one of the best in the world so we can definitely make this happen. It takes time, obviously, to build that bond with the trainer, but do you feel the early signs of that, that will come? I know, you, yeah. you know you're not someone who's going to be around the gym shouting and screaming all the right. time, but you're, you're quite a quiet guy, but can you feel that bond growing already? Yeah, you know, he's, he's easy to get on with Shane, and, you know, he listens and, you know, takes on board whatever you have to tell him, so, and if he, you know, he sees a lot himself, so, because he's been, you know, he's been around, he's had many world champions and dealt with many different styles, so, you know, what he has to say, I listen to it and uh, I try to make it happen. Have you had much contact with his dad as yet, Barry McGuigan, obviously yeah. a legend, he's always got a lot of knowledge to pass on? Yeah, he's been down the gym, you know, he's watching us, so <laughs> he's very enthusiastic, Barry, and I, and I like that, you know, he's a guy my dad grew up watching, you know, at the same sort of era, so yeah, it's, it's good to be back. Good stuff. Now you've got Bob Dandino, of course, June the 5th. Um, important fight, not just because it's your comeback, but because it's for the uh, WBA uh, interim title. It will get you a very high ranking in the uh, w WBA, number two at stake. Yeah. Um, what does he bring to the table uh, and how important is this fight for your career? This is a very important fight. This is um, my comeback and my, you know, my next fight. I want to make a statement and uh, as soon as I see you know, an opening or a weakness, then I'm going to jump right on it. You know, like I said, this is a comeback and I want to make it a fresh start and a good start. 
it's a credit, I guess, to Frank Warren and the team there that you're coming back where you could end up in a similar position to where Joe Joyce is now, even yeah. though he came on top in that fight. He has a fault it. You're going to come back before him and yeah. you're going to be right up the top of the rankings as he is. Yeah, that's um, good matchmaking. <laughs> yeah. Boxing, yeah. Uh, good, good job on Frank. You know, he's a top man, top promoter. And, um, yeah, he's getting me right back up there. And that's where I want to be. And I don't want to be, you know, playing around with too many soft touches. Um, I'm, I believe I'm up there. And, Joe, Joe, Joe Joyce and that sort of fighters there in my league and I need to just get you know get back on my feet and then, then we'll see take it from there. How challenging is it um, preparing for this fight in a number of weeks when you've just started at a new gym? Yeah. Ideally you've had you know six, eight, maybe more uh, weeks to prepare for the yeah. Don't get me wrong, me and Jimmy and, and, and the boys at the other gym, and Mark Tibbs gym, we've been preparing a lot for their so that's just carrying on carrying me through this, this one, so we've done enough work. How different is it though, coming from that gym to this gym? I know boxing boxing, but different trainers have different styles. Is it a big difference or is it just little parts? Not really, I, I play the world with any style and whatever the coach is trying to teach me and if he has a, whatever approaches he has, like Shane is young, he's, he's sort of, um, you know, uh, I say, modern in his approach to it, so we take, you know, we go, we go well. Now the injury, I don't want to harp on it too much because I know you're a man of the future, as you said earlier, um, but it was a, a devastating injury at the time, hard to tell now that it ever happened, but when all the people came out on social media, not just fans, but some Xboxers and things like that as well, and criticised you for what happened, did, did that hurt, did, did, you know, at that time, now you're obviously... No, fine. no, no, it didn't hurt me actually, um, you know, this is boxing and the people are going to have their opinion of you win or you lose, so... That's all just gone over my head now. I wanna, you know, I've, I've, I've sat around long enough hearing all of the talking and stuff. Now I'm ready for the act, for the action, and I wanna get back in there and you know, do it again. A lot was made recently of Billy Joe Saunders being one of the people that criticised you um, after the injury, and then he suffered a very similar injury himself in his last fight. What what do you think about that? And, and do you think perhaps he'll think before he says things like that in the future after what happened? Um, you know, I can't, don't really have much to say on what Billy said. He is, it's boxing, as I said, that everyone's going to have something to say and people are going to come out of, you know, wherever they are. And whatever they say, it doesn't matter. Um, this, it's, that's for them, their, their lesson to learn or whatever. I'm just focused on what I have to do. You're in good shape now. You're about to come back before your opponent. Um, enters the ring again. Yeah. So, probably a silly question, but I want to ask it. If that situation happened again, would you do the same thing? What, like? Uh, if you got hit and you had the eye injury again, would you pull out of the fight in the same way you did the, against Joe? You know, praying that, you know, oh, we've got women and all of that, that, that never happens. No, of course. Again, you know? And, um, you know, I don't even want to think about that. If it's, it's done and gone. Good stuff. So, Bob Dandino, do you know much about him? What can you tell us about him? Um, he's you know my next opponent, my next target, and uh, yeah, just all, all kinds of all my whole energy is focused on getting rid of him and putting a, a good performance, and uh, you know, you know, proving all the, the doubt is wrong, and you know, moving forward again and getting back on the road. What will that do for you mentally to finally wipe out the fact that you know the loss was your last fight? Once you get past Dino, all yeah. being well. Then you're looking back on a win, yeah. everything's bright, the future's bright. Mentally, what would that do for you? That clears the air again, you know, clears the air. So I'm, I'm, I'm le you know, walking into the light again. And, uh, <laughs> I like, yeah, well, it's a nice image. <laughs> yeah, it's, right now we're just, I've got to get out of this and, uh, you know, get, out, get, get back on, the, on my feet and then, then everything will be clear again and that's, you know, set the record straight. And you've got Caroline, obviously, um, preparing for the Olympic uh, Olympics. You've got the qualifier yeah. recently as well. How's she getting on? And, and has that been quite inspiring to watch her preparing with GB while you've been um, preparing for your comeback fight? Yeah, it has. Um, it's kind of, you know, Caroline, she's going for the Olympics, and you know what a massive it's a tournament. I'm glad that's happening, and for her, she's put a lot into it. So it'll be great to see her get it and pull it off. What would mean more as a kind of uh, mentoring older brother? You winning a world title or Caroline winning Olympic gold? Both of us. <laughs> Both of but us. if you had to pick one, if there was a genie and he only gave you one wish because he's stingy rather than three, which would you go for? <laughs> you know, uh, 
This is a test of whether you're selfish or not. This is, this is, we can both make it happen. We can both make it happen, trust you're me. You're going to be greedy, that's okay. Have it all. Have it all, yeah, why not? Um, where does a victory over Bogdan Dinu put you, apart from a high place in the WBA rankings? You said you don't want many soft touches. Where would you like to go next, ideally? Wherever they line up for me again and whoever they have set for me, then I'm ready to I'll, I'll take the fight. And once everything's right, then yeah, we can make What impact would you say the defeat to Joe Joyce, I don't mean physically, I don't mean the eye, but what impact would you say it had on you as a fighter? You know, cause some will say it's made them more determined to succeed, some will say oh, it made me depressed for a little while, but then I came out of it. What, what impact did it have on you? Um, probably more determined to succeed. Yeah, yeah, definitely that. Um, I've had, like, like I said before, I've had defeats as an amateur and I've had to go back and reassess myself and think about what I've done wrong and what can I do better next time. In boxing, professional boxing, it's different because the world sees you that you lose. As an amateur, you, can, you lose a board or international tournaments don't see it. So, um, yeah, now, now I'm just more determined than ever. Do you think you're quite, because you have been around so many different trainers, do you think you're quite coachable? Do you pick new things up very quickly? Yeah, yeah. I definitely think so. Shane says it as well. And, you know, most of the trainers that I've, I've been with, they've told me, you know, I learn things, I pick up things pretty quickly. And I'm, I'm eager to get in there and try new things out. What else do you think all your past trainers would say about you? So if you got them all in a room and said, tell me what Daniel Dubois is like, yeah. what would they all agree on? What would they all say about you? Sure, man. <laughs> you have to ask them. I can't, I can't tell you. I've got that long. <laughs> too many. Yeah. What, what does your dad say about you? Because he probably knows you better than anyone. What, what, when, he, yeah. when someone, if someone says your dad, what's Daniel Dubois like? Tell me three things that you could say. That's Daniel Dubois. What would he say? I can say. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go out to the van and ask him. <laughs> I can say, man. Um, no, just a humble, humble guy. Um, a guy that wants to um, entertain and go out there. And, do his thing. Good stuff. Well, can't wait to see you do your thing on June the 5th. Yeah. Great to see you back. Great to see you smiling again. And uh, best of luck. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers.